It's that time again, you guys. It is Extreme Buyer's Guide time. We have a brand new updated Extreme build for 2011, but that's not to say that it's using Socket 2011. Yes, I know Socket 2011 is right around the corner and we will be updating this machine with a 2011 build, but this is an Extreme Buyer's Guide that other than the CPU and the motherboard is pretty much as extreme as it gets. So how extreme is this machine? Well, to give you guys some idea, just to look like a normal sized person next to this case and all this hardware, oh, I was standing on this box. Yes, I was standing on it edgewise. So I had to give myself an extra foot of height to not be dwarfed by the magnitude of the hardware I'm surrounded by right now. Oh, sorry guys, I didn't see you there. I got. Uh, I got distracted by the awesomeness of the Battlefield 3 gaming experience to be had on this particular beast of a machine. You can see my frame rates up in the top. We're running on all high presets, 1080p, 150 FPS because, yeah, this is quad SLI at its best. I'm going to go ahead now. But the first thing in any extreme buyer's guide is the case because from my perspective, that is where an extreme machine starts from. So we have the Silverstone TJ11 case here. This is an XL ATX case, which means you can fit motherboards with up to nine PCI expansion slots. It is also fully liquid cooling optimized and air cooling optimized. So first I'll show you the air cooling optimizations because not everybody wants to liquid cool even if they are building an extreme machine. So check this out. This motherboard is actually mounted in here at a 90 degree offset. What that means is that your graphics cards are going to be properly cooled by the air penetrator fans behind it. Here I'm just going to remove this by the air penetrator fans that are blowing up at the card and then you are going to be able to exhaust directly out the top of the case. So this is going to be aided by the natural convection process that exists. Heat rises, uh, as they say. So here you can see at the top, that is where all of my I.O. is and where all the cables come out the back. We've also got a 120 mil fan here that is exhausting heat using a radiator and we just cover the whole thing up with that top piece and no one is the wiser about the orientation of our board. Another thing that the TJ11 offers for the water cooling enthusiast is a huge basement. So we've got a quadruple 120 millimeter radiator down here and you can even fit up to a quadruple 140 millimeter radiator in the bottom of this case which means that no matter what kind of crazy hardware you put in here you are going to be able to adequately cool it because both sides of the case have ventilation slots so that you can blow all of the heat away. So you're using the water to carry the heat down to the radiator. You can blow it in one side, out the other side without any of it affecting the internal case temperatures. You can also fit up to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five and a quarter inch expansion slots. You could throw another radiator up there. You could replace the front uh, covers and put you know mesh covers on there you can do whatever you want that way it's got front USB 3 front USB 2 front audio and it's got these two 180 millimeter air penetrator fans so I talked a little bit about how that is going to help you air cool your graphics card should you need to do that and then this one is also going to blow fresh air at your memory slots as well as your VRM where it will then be exhausted by this guy up here now the case comes with six three and a half inch hot swappable bays down in the bottom, but we took that out because we're doing water cooling. And that's basically your own call. If you're doing air cooling, then it's great to have those hot swappable caddies and that is very convenient, but we opted for SSDs and for a full liquid cooling setup in here, which was actually very easy and required no modification to the case to get it going. Now on this side of the machine, we're going to find the solution that we used instead of the three and a half inch hard drive caddies that were on the bottom. And that is to mount our two and a half inch SSDs on the back of the motherboard tray in space that is normally reserved 
for our cable routing and putting the inverters for our cathode lights and all of that other good stuff. Well, now we're mounting drives there. And I think with some creativity, we could probably mount as much as sort of one, two, three, four. We could probably get about four or so drives on the back before we ran into any difficulties whatsoever. Also from this angle, we're going to see some of the water cooling hardware. So this is a predominantly Swiftex setup here. And we're also going to see the power supply. So we went with the High Current Pro 1200 watt from Antec. This is a power supply that has actually been known to pull in excess of 1500 watts from the wall in extreme overclocking. You can check that out in some of the release coverage of this power supply without exploding, so to speak. It's an 80 plus gold modular power supply and I'm personally a big fan of it. In spite of the 80 mil fan, speaking of fans, it is very quiet even with the kind of load that we're drawing from it with a system like this. So this CPU is overclocked to 4.66 gigahertz and we've got dual G GTX 590s in there, and it's not even breaking a sweat. Now, while I talked about the mounting of the SSDs, I didn't talk about the SSDs themselves much. These are Patriot Wildfire drives. These are using the latest Sandforce SATA 3 6 gigabit per second controller. And while this drive, the Intel controller, or this drive, this motherboard, the Intel controller on board does not support SATA 3 6 gigabit per second, the one we're going to upgrade it to with LGA 2011 will. Now, these drives use toggle NAND flash, which means that out of all the SATA 3 6 gigabit per second drives out there, these wildfires are among the very fastest. So we've got two of these in RAID 0 for the maximum performance that can be achieved. Oh, sorry guys, I was uh, just using this extreme gaming machine for its intended purpose, which is gaming although this isn't very extreme. Nope, let's get back on track here and let's start going through some of the other hardware that was included with the Ultimate Guide. So you see all these boxes next to me here and they, they do have some meaning to them. So first of all, we've got the power supply. We already talked about the High Current Pro 1200, which I think is uh, a bit of a stretch to call it a 1200 watt power supply since we've seen real world examples of it pulling more than 1200 watts. And then we have our NVIDIA GTX 590s. I don't know if you guys have watched my Linus Tech Tips blog videos, but that's the box that my GTX 590s came in. And then we've gone with EVGA classified water blocks to make these essentially EVGA classified water-cooled GTX 590s, two of them in quad SLI. Now remember, two GTX 590s in quad SLI is the most you can have because you can either have three-way SLI with three single cards or you can have four-way SLI with two dual GPU cards, or you can have four-way SLI with four individual cards. A lot of people say to me whenever they see me running 590s in SLI, oh, what if you ran it in three-way SLI? That would be six GPUs. Right now, that's not supported by the NVIDIA driver, but who knows what's coming in the future, right? So we've got our dual 590s. I talked about the SSDs already, and... Now we've got the RAM. I want to talk about the RAM in this build a little bit because I think it is pretty baller. We've got our Mushkin enhanced Copperhead modules. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to tip the system a little bit so you guys can have a look at the sweet heat spreader. It's a golden black spreader that comes on it. You got a good angle of that. There you go. Can I move this tubing out of the way? Can you see it? You can see it. Okay. And then the Copperhead kit actually comes with so this is 12 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and you can install the Copperhead water block, and you can check out how to do that in my water cooling guide to get the basically coolest running RAM experience possible. So it's totally unnecessary to water cool memory. I'll be the first to tell you guys that, but this is an extreme buyer's guide. And if you are extreme enough, then you even water cool your memory. So we have the Copperhead modules from Mushkin. Another extreme thing about this particular build is the G1 Assassin motherboard. So the G1 Assassin uses a killer nick in order to give you lower ping times in online games. It also uses an onboard amplified audio solution. So that means that even compared to many add-in sound cards, the sound included on the G1 Sniper, the G1 Sniper 2, and the G1 Assassin, which are the only G1 boards at the time of filming, are worlds better than pretty much anything else you can get on a motherboard. And 
a lot of the things you can get on a dedicated sound card. So it's for that reason that in this extreme guide we haven't included a sound card even though we have plenty of expansion slots left. So even though we've installed two 590s we still have two PCIe 1X slots for expansion and two PCIe 8X slots for expansion for the future. What else do we have here? I think that pretty much covers it. The obvious choice is an Intel Core i7 Extreme. So we've gone with a Core i7 Extreme 990X and we've overclocked it to 4.66 gigahertz, staying within reasonable temperatures. And finally, oh yeah, the water cooling by Swiftex. So we've got our quadruple radiator here. We've got our Apogee series water block on the CPU itself. And then these GTX 590s, the EVGA classified 590s, are actually using water blocks that I'm not sure if you're going to be able to even see this, but down here in that corner, do you have an angle at that? Designed by SwiftTech, built by SwiftTech, those are SwiftTech blocks. So they are the water cooling go-to guys for my extreme building needs. Now what I didn't do for my original Ultimate PC showcase and guide was include peripherals. Now there's a few peripherals that I do want to showcase here and that is the Corsair K90 which has 18 by 3 programmable G keys on the left hand side. So great for MMO gaming. The K60 is the FPS optimized one with the hand rest right here next to WASD. It is also a mechanical keyboard using cherry red switches which Corsair has determined is ideal both for typing as well as for gaming use. Now one of the, some of the other cool features of this keyboard are the individually backlit laser etched keys which means these characters are never going to come off of them ever as well as the volume wheel, media buttons and brightness adjustments. So you got three levels as well as off and you can disable the Windows key should you so desire. The build quality is phenomenal and the pricing for a mechanical keyboard is actually very competitive. The other thing I have here next to me today is the M90. So this is the MMO version of their mouse which has a ton of buttons as you can clearly see. It's got 12 buttons over here on the left hand side. It's got an additional button here and then your standard left and right click. What makes this mouse special is the fact that you have a dead space in the middle where you can actually rest your mouse without accidentally pressing the buttons when you're trying to lift it off a surface. And the fact that you can very easily tactilely, I know it's not a word, feel which buttons you're pressing without accidentally pressing the wrong thing and you know casting fireball when you meant to cast group heal or whatever the case may be. We've also got a headset here so this is the Vengeance 1300. I went with the 1300 for my ultimate build because my ultimate motherboard has an amplified headphone out port so I opted to go with what I can get the most of that onboard sound card with versus the USB Vengeance 1500 which is also a good choice if your ultimate build doesn't include a motherboard that has amplified audio out. For a mouse pad, SteelSeries is still my weapon of choice and I think at this point I'm just going to thank you guys for checking out our Ultimate PC Showcase and don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more reviews, tutorials, product showcases, and other great stuff from your favorite online retailer, NCIX.com.